Welcome to your lesson regarding Chapter 4, Aqueous Solutions and Solution Stoichiometry. Today's first lesson has the topic of General Properties of Aqueous Solutions. We have our note pack open to page 1 from our, our Chapter 4. And in this section we are highlighting some vocabulary in terms of electrolytic properties for solutions. We begin by taking a quick peek of some review terms. The word solution. We know that those are two, in, two or more ingredients that have been physically blended. The term solution is another name for a homogeneous mixture. When we take a solute and dissolve it into a solvent, we create a solution. For example, if we were to take sodium chloride and sprinkle it into water, salt water, salt would be the solute, water is the solvent. We see that every one of the um, Every one of our uh, solutions in this particular chapter are going to be dissolved in water. So water solutions. Alrighty. If something does dissolve in water, it's said to be soluble. A solid dissolving in water is soluble. If it does not dissolve in water, it is insoluble. And the term miscible is that word that would represent two liquids that dissolve into each other immiscible are two liquids that would not dissolve into each other. Since our entire chapter is devoted to water, it's important to understand those physical and chemical properties of water that make it such a universal solvent. When solutions are created, we have a solute dissolving in water. The little AQ sign represents that it is indeed an aqueous solution. Water is such a good solvent because it is polar. And it's important to review the term polarity. We in introduced the term in first year chemistry but did not spend a great deal of time. We said a polar molecule is one in which regions of positive and negative both exist within the same structure. A bar magnet is a good example of a polar substance. An ordinary bar magnet has a region that has a positive charge and a region that has a negative charge. It is said to be a dipole or have moments of polarity. A water molecule has the same structure. That's supposed to be an H. Here's an H and this is an oxygen. Two H's and an O bonded together. If I think about the Lewis dot structure, the electron configuration of a water molecule, this oxygen has two two electron sets that are, these are two dots two dots two sets of electrons that are indeed exposing a area an area that is very electronegative this region on the oxygen is partially negative the region on the hydrogen is left partially positive what i'm drawing is a little greek symbol a little squiggly s that represents visually the term partial. It is partially positive and partially negative. The oxygen is very electronegative. It is pulling the electrons in the shared pair towards its center. So the electron rich density of oxygen makes this region quite negative. And those hydrogens are left with a positive charge. The bond angle of a water molecule and again we're looking at some molecular geometry is approximately 105 and it's really not degrees Celsius the bond angle is just 105 degrees so the region between the two H's water is a bent geometry water is not linear where the H's come straight out but it is bent so these areas that are positive and an area that is negative make a great region to attract other particles that have positive and negative regions on them as well. We're going to be asked to draw a water molecule and really it can be as easy as what I've done. Take a hydrogen, connect it to an oxygen, connect it to the second hydrogen and show the two dots of electrons that are unpaired. Two sets of unpaired electrons make this region partially negative and this region partially positive. With a bond angle of approximately 105 degrees between the two H's. Water is a 
polar molecule. Because of these areas that are charges with partial negative and partial positive, we start to see areas for in existing for example, if I have a sodium ion or a chloride ion, ions are built of these charges, we could see an attraction between these oppositely charged regions of ionic compounds in a polar molecule. This process known as solvation, creating a solution. That's a nice little pop up there, sorry, creating a solution through a process known as solvation. If water, and it is in our chapter, serves as the solvent, the process has a more specific vocabulary term known as hydration when water is the solvent. And the process of breaking ions from the ionic compounds known as salts, when they fall apart, we call that dissociation. So the process of hydration is really just breaking apart ions of commonly called salts. Salts is just another name for any ionic compound. Ions that have charges and attract the opposite charges on the water molecules. Let's show a sample of a salt crystal being hydrated through the process of solvation. This is what I'm going to ask that we draw together in the bottom of page one of our note pack. This is a repeating pattern of sodium chloride crystal. Think about the negative opposite charge next to positive, next to negative, next to positive. See this repeating pattern of a sodium chloride. In this particular picture, the positive ion is representing that of a sodium ion. And the chloride ion is represented here with the lighter green. So we see a repetition of Na plus Cl negative, Na plus Cl negative. When they are organized into a crystalline structure, they are in the solid phase. If I think about sprinkling a solid crystal of salt, very highly organized with a repeating pattern, the water molecules begin to bump against it. The water molecules, which are shown here, HOH, notice the molecular geometry being bent. The region that's up here is negative on the oxygen, partial positive here on the hydrogens. Notice how it can form almost like a little pocket, a pocket of an area to pull in the oppositely charged ion. If water molecule areas here that are positive, sorry for that pop up, still coming up here to be positively charged, well, it's going to be attracted to the negative chloride. And we start to see the hydrogens from water all surround the negative ion. Take a peek here. The oxygen, which we know has a polarity of negative charge, it's a negatively charged region. So again, it's going to attract the positive ion of sodium. Knowing the basic laws of electricity and opposites attract, this process is pulling apart the ions and surrounding them completely with water molecules. You can see from the process that the negative chloride, look at those H's all surrounding it oppositely charged particles. Here's the sodium ion with a positive charge completely surrounded by the negative oxygen from the water. Pause your video and take a moment to draw, just as I have on the slide here, the solid phase of sodium chloride very highly organized. Then the solvated ions. Those solvated ions surrounding and the water molecules. When you have this drawn on the bottom of page one, start the video up again and you'll flip to page two of your notes. Let's check in our own head some concepts for understanding. How does water dissociate ionic compounds? Water dissociates ionic compounds through the opposite charges, just a basic law of electricity. Here we have a repeating pattern of positive and negative ions in a solid phase. A water molecule, 
a water molecule is going to surround the positive region by using its oxygen. The water molecule will surround the negative ion by using its hydrogens with the opposite charges associating. Water is a polar molecule. What does that term mean? Check for understanding. A polar molecule? You got it. It's a molecule that has a region that is a little bit positive and a region that's a little bit negative all within the same structure. Water is polar because it has areas that are positive, those are the hydrogen atoms, and an area that's negative the surrounded electrons on the oxygen. Water is polar because it has an uneven distribution of charge, an area that's positive and an area that's negative. What's the difference between ionic and molecular compounds? Oh, a very strong, strong background because we need to dissociate ionic, leave together the molecular. Perhaps you remember from year one, ionic compounds when we take a metal who is a positive charge and hook it to a non-metal which has a negative charge. Positives and negatives we crisscross charges and write formulas. Ionic compounds are made of ionic bonds. They're made of charges. Molecular compounds on the other hand are when all non-metals group together by something called a covalent bond. There are no such things as charges in molecular compounds. Ionic compounds, they're built of charges. These are commonly called salts. Molecular compounds are made of nonmetals all grouped together by covalent bonds. They are non-electrolytes. Top of page two, the term solubility. It is defined as how much of a substance will dissolve in a given amount of water. It's typically given a unit of grams of solute per hundred mils of solution. How much can we get to dissolve in water? And the such a large variety of salts, the solubility varies enormously from salt to salt. If they do not dissociate, we call those an insoluble salt. However, most solid compounds, ionic compounds, do indeed dissolve and dissociate. Those ions are separated and therefore can move around. The ionic compound is said to dissociate and form its component ions. We practice some of those in the opening day of our notes. Water can dissolve any non-ionic compound if they have polar bonds, so likes dissolve likes. We can get ordinary table sugar, C12, H22, O11. It will dissolve in water because it is polar, but it does not dissociate and form an electrical current. So solubility, does it dissolve in water, and if so, how much? Ionic compounds dissociate. Molecular compounds do not dissociate. I have several animations at this point on our Moodle page that I'd like you to watch as well before we continue our lesson on electrolytes. I want you to think about electrolytes in terms of moving charges. Watch the video clip on the process of hydration and watch the video clip that models the demonstration from class strong versus weak versus non-electrolytes. When we think of electrolytes, we have to think of does it have charged particles create an electrical current? And those ions that have to be able to move around to create this current. Knowing that it's only ionic compounds, metal to nonmetal, positive to negative, cation to anion, that can actually cause an electrical current to turn on the light bulb. Pause this lesson, take a peek at those um, little animated videos, and then turn the lesson back on and we'll take a look at the next slide together.